things like trademark, brand names, domain names are going to be types of things related to marketing that are intangible types of assets. More categories include things like goodwill, goodwill resulting from an acquisition of a company. So you'll recall if we acquire a company, then uh, what we're going to do is we could, there's a couple different ways we could acquire the company, but it could result in goodwill because you could think of the company being assets minus liabilities or the value being the equity section. If the equity section assets minus liabilities equals what the company was worth, you would think that if we were purchasing the company, that's what we would pay for the company. However, oftentimes what we see is, is that a company buys another company and pays more than the book value of the company. Why would they do that? Well, the assumption is there's some type of intangible assets, such as the brand name of the company, and that would be the result of goodwill. So goodwill is something that will typically often be recorded, but it'll typically be recorded only when there's a purchase type of transaction that happens. And we will have to, of course, somehow value uh, that goodwill if it's on the financial statements. Technology, both those uh, that have patented and unpatented types of technologies, then we have contracts, things like licenses, franchises, broadcasting rights. These are contracts, again, another kind of intangible type of asset. Now we're going to discuss inherent risks related to intangible assets. You'll recall, once again, our goal as the auditors to think about the inherent risk, to think about the control risk, and then to set the detection risk so that we can think about how much substantive testing we need to do. The inherent risk, control risk, things that are in the company's control by the business that they are in and the controls that they put in related to the risks of that business. The inherent risk, the risk that are, you could think about taking away the controls and thinking about just the inherent riskiness of uh, those items without the controls. Now, when we think about intangible assets, they can cause a serious risk consideration. And again, you could you will list some of the items here, but of course, the fact that they're intangible and they're going to be on the balance sheet, there's things that we're reporting as value as assets and they don't have physical substance. It can be a little bit difficult for us to, to basically verify, test, prove the value of these things, as is our job. So risk can be great because accounting rules are complex. Accounting rules related to them will be complex because, once again, these things are going to be difficult to value and the transactions are difficult to audit. It's not, it's not as easy to audit these kind of contracts that arise from these intangible assets. They can be quite complex in some cases. So accounting standards require different uh, asset impairment tests for different classes of intangible assets. So when we think about the assets on the book, notice that what we want to do from a regulatory standpoint is to record it. Typically, we re 